modern priestess movement. I am here with Lizzie Swartz, a dear, dear soul sister of mine and fairy queen, oracle, uh, my uh, personal spiritual midwife on my midwife team for my own <laughs> spiritual awakening. So um, thank you for being here, Lizzie. I'm so happy to thank be talking Thank you, Katie. Thanks, yeah. for, thanks for inviting this. Thanks for birthing this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Excited. Yeah, me too. Me too. Me too. Um, so I want to ask about um, this evolution you've been going through. Mm -hmm. um, that I noticed when you became a mother, mm -hmm. things really opened up for you. Um, and a very and I had a very similar experience. Um, I'm wondering if you want to tell us a bit about your story and um, how you've healed yourself, uh, and just you know what has it looked like to got to to become the woman who is sitting in front of us today. Okay, it's a big question. I know <laughs> that's a lot there. Where do you want me to start? <laughs> yeah, um, maybe we could start. Um, maybe the initiation into motherhood. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Um. So. Yeah. Um. I, I. Okay. Yeah. Um. I'm just checking in to see which part of motherhood they want me to start with. Because <laughs> it's quite a journey, right? Um, it so is. So I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to start with, um, when I first got pregnant. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was very controlling, you might say, about the entire experience. I went on like this, like really intense fertility diet and like didn't necessarily trust my body that she could get pregnant. But I had gone through an entire like other age of healing my body and stuff and um and then I got pregnant and I miscarried mm -hmm. and that to me was um a huge just cracking open of my entire heart like I felt my heart just shatter into a million pieces and um I at the time I had just started my journey with the flower essences um in in a training program I had been working with them for a few years before but it was when I took my first formula after that miscarriage. I was working with um, my primary flower essence teacher, Joanna May Cohen, at the time. And I remember just taking those, those essences. And I remember so clearly what was in that formula. Um, and just feeling like my heart start to come back together again. Mm -hmm. And it was in between that... Um, the time when I had the miscarriage and when I conceived that my husband and I went on a pilgrimage to Lourdes. And um, so Lourdes, if people aren't familiar with it, is a very magical place. It's where I almost consider my spiritual birthplace. Um, when I went to Lourdes, so basically like this girl Bernadette, this visionary Bernadette, had this um, woman come to her in the 1800s, and um, this woman had roses at her feet, and um, she wouldn't say that she was the the um, Mary. People kept asking Bernadette, "Who is this woman? Who is this woman? Who is this woman?" And finally, finally, the woman said, "Like, oh, I'm the Immaculate Conception." Um, and so I went there, like. To almost to heal myself, like the waters there are legendary in terms of their healing power. And I was there, like making essences. I made an essence of the Lord's water, mm -hmm. um, which was incredible. And um, I had this guidance come to me, like, go to the other side of the river, go to the other side of the river, and there's an essence waiting for you. And I was like, okay, so I went to the side of the river, and I um, was looking for the flowers and there were no flowers. And so I looked across the river to the grotto where the, um, uh, where the lady of Lourdes appeared to Bernadette and I saw this magnificent queen, just amazing, like incredible, incredible woman. Mm -hmm. And she said, I am the essence you are making. So I said, okay, I've never done this before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, she took my hands over the bowl of water, 
And she said, this is between you and me. This essence is not for your clients. This is for you. And over time, I've begun to understand that it's my fairy queen initiation, mm -hmm. that the Lady of Lourdes is a fairy queen. When I spoke to the trees there, they said the secret of Lourdes are in the forest. Um, and I now understand that there's this beautiful, beautiful um, relationship between Mother Mary and the fairy queens of this forest. That they're all working together to heal the hearts of the people who come and visit this place, this magical, magical place. So it's just filled with fairy magic. I mean, you even look at the cathedral there, and it looks like a fairy castle. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's incredible. Yeah. It's really incredible. Yeah. Um, and then on that trip, we also went to the the caves where Mary Magdalene was, and it all sort of has coming together as I've been learning that the, the fairy queen council that I'm working with is in the order of Magdalena. The the, the teachers who are here for the liberation of all beings mm -hmm. have told me that our mission is not complete until every electron of, of everything is free. Um, and so then I got pregnant basically when I came back again and, um, whew, pregnancy. So, um, <laughs> I hate it. So open. I hated it too. You're yeah. So yeah. open. Yeah. And you're still so open even after giving birth. It's just so open. Yeah. 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 Totally. It was awful. I mean, like, I'm <laughs> definitely an introvert. And uh, I feel like we need more people to say that they didn't enjoy pregnancy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, like, everybody's like, oh, my gosh, it's so amazing. And I'm like, well, it's a miracle for sure. Like, It's an initiation. It's a miracle. It's a journey. Um, <laughs> not, yeah, yeah, all of those things for sure. But um, I yeah. couldn't move my body the way I wanted to. I couldn't. Yeah, there were a lot of things that are important to me that I couldn't do. And that was really frustrating. <laughs> Limited. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as somebody who experiments on my I experiment on my body a lot with herbs. Mm -hmm. And like I couldn't do that because right. I'm responsible for another human being. Yeah. Um, and then also like I was really sick. I was in a lot of school. I was in acupuncture school at the time. I was right. like I 40 hours at class a week and trying to run a business and felt like crap. And, um, and basically everything that I had ever, every issue that I ever had in my life came up for me to deal with. Mm -hmm. Like everything, everything. There wasn't something that I didn't touch because I was very, very interested in having a home birth. And I knew that in order to have a home birth, I needed to heal myself, like heal the parts of myself that didn't feel worthy, didn't, didn't feel powerful. Um, you know, I was born in cesarean section and so I had to heal a lot of that and do a lot of soul retrieval and, um, and, and then, and let go yeah. of yeah. control because, um, when I'm working with the fairy queens, we're working with queen energy and I know Katie that you work a lot with queen energy yeah. and if we talk about the shadow of queen energy, that's control. Oh, yes. oh. And like not letting go, and you can't control birth. You can't control pregnancy. You can control your environment, but like you just have to let go. Like yeah. there's nothing you can do. Yeah. Yeah. And so I had two and a half weeks of contractions, um, and then finally I like actually went into labor. I mean, like I was waking up every night just praying to the goddess, like help me get through this. Like, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this. And I just kept feeling like, okay, I can, I can do this. That was my mantra. And that continues to be my mantra as I'm birthing my book. Like I can do this. Okay. I can do this. And, um, when I was in labor, I had the labor of my dreams. I mean, like, it was by far the most powerful initiatory experience I've ever had. When I was, um, so, I'll, I mean, I say that I hated pregnancy, but, like, I really, really loved being in labor, which is unusual, I think, for people. Like, they're like, ah. just, You go somewhere. You just you go, go somewhere. somewhere and get your baby. Like, yeah. that's, yeah. So I understand. I understand. Like, when I think about if I would ever have another child again, I think about labor. I don't really think about the part. I'm like, that would be the, that would be, a, that'd be cool. Like I'd go there again. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. I was in labor. I was 
on the toilet for like four hours, like wouldn't move, just there. And I got to this point where I was like, okay, I'm going to die. Yeah. Like, okay. And I was like in the womb of the goddess. Sophia, God, whatever you call her. And I just, I just felt her so clearly. And I said, I said to her, I said, take my life. Like, take my life. I am in service to you now. And I made my way to my bed. My water broke. And my baby was born from the hour. Surrender. Yeah. And that experience, I get bring tears to my eyes thinking about it because, like, that's the ultimate place. I mean, that's source. Like, I went to source, got my baby, got myself, mm-hmm. found myself, and then, and then I took her back. I took myself back, and I reclaimed myself as a mother. And a mother of myself, like, yes. yeah. not even of my baby, but, like, of the parts of me that need to come to the table, that need to be heard, the parts of me that I've been ignoring um, or haven't let speak. And, and then also... Like, you just realize that the world isn't for you. Like, it is for you, for sure. But, like, there's something so much bigger than you out there. And then you have a baby in your arms. And your priorities immediately shift to how do I spend as much time as possible with this miraculous little being that's come out of my body? And that's really shaped my work a lot, you know, like... Everything I do, I do for him. Like, I do for him. I do for all the children. Um, I'm hoping to come up with a service in the next few weeks for a mama's. Um, I'm not sure quite what it looks like yet, but um, the guidance I've been receiving is that I'm in service to the children that are coming through. It's the mama's too, but um, to the babies. Um and they respond to the fairy world in a way that is incredible. I mean, like, I use flower essences with Adam all the time. Mm-hmm. All the time. All the time. All the time. Uh, and he responds to them like a champion. Like, sometimes I'm like, I wish adults would respond like this. But, <laughs> but they do. They do. It's just, like, a difference between, like, a few days and a month, you know? Yeah. Um, okay. Can you tell us... Tell us um, uh, who the flower angels are and who the, who are the fairy queens. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> I see the fairy queens as the ascended masters of the earth plane. Mm. So, um, they are, and there's, uh, there's various, like, there's fairy queens in other planets, um, but the fairy queens that I'm working with are of earth. Mm-hmm. Um, there are, they, they rule by watershed, so, like, um, they, their territories are divided by the, the way that the water moves into rivers and streams, and they have a lot of water medicine, they're very connected to the waters. Obviously, I first met them when I was at Lourdes, um, and they are the birthers of magic, so they're the ones that, like, birth magic. In, in the world, like, like M-A-G-I-C-K. We're not talking card tricks. We're talking, like, um, transformation from within. And uh, they are masters of a few things. So they work a lot with um, abundance. We talk about, like, how the, the original fertility goddesses were actually goddesses of agricultural abundance. Um, So we're talking about, like, the fertility of the soil and the fertility of the earth. And the fairy queens talk a lot about how our bodies are made of soil. And so, like, we're working with the same energy of fertility, but we're not separate from the earth. Like, we are, like, literally made from the same cells. And um, 
maybe not the same cells, but the same matter. And um, so they're really good with fertility of all types, like birthing magic, birthing babies, birthing money, like um, abundance of all sorts. They're really, really good with the physical body um, and using the subtle energetics of nature to shift the way that the physical body is working. They are really, really good with um, sovereignty, like helping women step into like their rule. Like they don't take direction really from anybody. Um, they work with the ascended masters hand in hand for sure. But like, there's not really um, a king that is in charge of them. There are fairy kings. But they're, like, working hand-in-hand hand, as opposed to, like, rule over. They're definitely, like, if we talk about the rule, like, the paradigms of, like, rule over and rule from within, like, they're ruling from within. Yeah. Um, was there anything else? I'm just going to check in with them to see if there's anything they want to say. They just say that they're so excited to be here and to be seen. Um, one of the things that's tricky with fairy queen medicine is that there's this perception that, like, oh, fairies are little. Um, they're not. Like, <laughs> there are little fairies. There are little fairies. And there are airy fairies. But, like, we're talking, like, full-on, like, em embodied queens. Some of them, I see them, like, the queen, like, the Lady of Lords was enormous. Like, mm -hmm. enormous. And her energy is obviously enormous if she's... Facil like facilitating miracles, like healing miracles. You look at all the healing miracles that come through Lourdes, and like that is fairy queen magic. Mm -hmm. um, they work a lot with weather weather patterns. I know I talked to you about like last week. I was experiencing a lot of hurricane energy through my body, just like moving through all the things that like weren't in alignment with what's happening in my heart. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the flower angels. Yeah. So the flower angels are, um, so, okay, in my flower essence training, I was taught to make flower essences by um, connecting with the plant and going on a shamanic journey and, like, through that shamanic journey, receiving messages from the plant and then, like, bringing those messages back and then testing them and working with the flower essence that way. And... One of my biggest philosophies is that, like, you have to do what's inherent to your nature. And so, like, I'm not a shamanic practitioner at all. I'm a channel. And so I was like, well, why don't I just channel the flower essences? And so I, like, went to source and had a conversation with these flowers. And they just started appearing as angels to me and asked me to call them flower angels. And so I said, okay, that sounds like fun. And as I've been working with them, like the more real they come to me, like I talk about like, excuse me, like Lady Sage, like Lady White Sage is just like, you can feel her, she's an angel. Yes. And like Belladonna, she's this like dark witch who just comes in and snaps the cords. And um, like the rose, like the order of the rose, they're just like these armies of angels that come in and like, pull together the pieces of your heart. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I work with creating a flower essence formula now, I'm assembling an army of flower angels. And so like I see them almost just like surrounding each bottle and working with the people as they take the formulas. Um, Is there anything you'd like to say specifically about um, helping the listeners understand yeah. rose medicine? Oh, yeah, sure. So, um, they just started talking, so I'm going to go in and, and, and I'll share what I have to say, and then I'll share what they have to say. I'd love that. Okay. Um, so I, uh, um, have 13 rose bushes in my yard. There might be more, there might be less, there's definitely at least 13. Um... And they are the the royal. They're the royalty of the flower angels, and they are the medicine of the queen. Mm -hmm. They are. Um, I don't actually use them all that frequently in practice. To be honest, I use them mainly in meditation. Um, 
And as I've been starting to work with the Order of Magdalena and Mother Mary and the Lady of Lourdes, the rose medicine has been coming in a lot more strongly. Um, and they are the medicine of the heart. Yeah. Like they are the opening of the heart. They are helping you to sit in the throne of your heart. They help us to bring all of the parts of ourselves to the table that we've been hiding away or pushing away or ignoring so that we can bring them in to be healed. Um, and they have, they have a blessing for us, for you and me, and for everybody who listens. Um, I'm talking to the, the queen of the roses. And she says, hello, beautiful ones. We are so excited to be working with you today. We just have a brief message to you that you are the ruler of, the, of your heart. You are the sovereign ruler of your heart. And your throne is your heart. And we invite you to sit in that right now. Just imagine your consciousness moving from the top of your head into your throne. We invite all parts of you to the table. The parts of you that are angry or sad. Parts of you that feel overwhelmed. The parts of you that are ecstatic, joyful. If you feel resistance, invite the part of you that is resistance to the table. She has important things to say. We are the facilitators of this council of your heart. Surrounding you with our beautiful, beautiful rose medicine. You might even smell us around you. And with each part of you that's in this circle, needing love today, each of the hearts of each of these beings inside you, we are sending our blessings of courage, of sweet, sweet self-love, of acknowledgement, those feelings of I am worth it. Teaching each of these women that she is sovereign. And you can feel a blessing coming through from Mother Mary and the Lady of Lourdes and Mary Magdalene. Blessing all those parts of you. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And they say that whenever people listen to this, this family of roses will be with these women throughout the entire day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. you're welcome. Uh, I've, never, I've never actually worked with them in quite that way, so that's really fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's happening for you more and more, where you're... Every day. Every day, where you're like, oh, wow, that was a first, and I'm rolling with it and flowing with it. Um, so how has that been uh, for you as you are very open to these, um, to the flower angels, to... A lot of counsel. You have a lot of counsel that is uh, that are volunteering to come yeah. and work with you. So mm -hmm. how are you able to stay? Um, how are you able to receive all that? I have to love myself a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Because there's that worthiness piece that comes up where it's like, am I worthy to receive all this love? Yeah. And the the answer is yes. Um, I work with a lot of structure. So like task lists and um, like time set aside for writing. Mm -hmm. Um, I have very focused projects I'm working on. I'm writing a book on fairy queen medicine. I'm writing an oracle deck on the flower angels. And, um, well, on top of that, I'm also creating a product line. But that's, that's like, that's a little bit farther in the future. But like right now, my, my, um, my priority is the book. Yeah. And yeah. Writing, writing the book. The, um, but like, to be honest, as I write the book, like things come through where I'm like, it's a, it's a, it's a living medicine. And, as I'm listening and learning from these fairy queens, like they're working on me and it's requiring me to change. Yeah. And so I have to take really good care of myself. Like, um, I went to acupuncture yesterday. Um, I, I don't do a lot of things that normal people do. Like I don't watch the news. I, um, I have a pretty select circle of friends um, I keep really, really, really strong boundaries. Um, I've had to give up a lot. Like, I recently dropped out of acupuncture school because it was just too distracting. Like, yeah, it's just not where my energy is right now. Mm -hmm. um, so discernment, and, discernment has been discernment. huge. Yeah. yeah, and then also, like, I just kind of enjoy being a cowboy a bit. Like, like hey... I mean, I've, I've got a lot of things set up in place. Like, I have a lot of things that ground me, like my baby and my husband. My baby's a big part of it, too. I mean, like, Adam, like, if I'm ever like, whoa, that was weird. Like, I just go, like, listen to Baby Beluga for a while. Right. Like, you know? Um, so, so, like, that's a big part of it, too. And then, like, hands in the dirt in the garden. Like, I have to keep, a, like, almost like a 50-50 balance between, like, hands-on physical activity and energetic, like, computer, social media activity. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, yeah, I've got a lot of counsels, but I just, like, you know, I work a lot with dolphin energy. And, um... Why dolphins? Why are you working with the dolphins? Because they're my best friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just always connected with the dolphins, um... They are really big heart beings. Um, they've got a lot of really cool energy medicine. Mm -hmm. And I just feel a really strong connection with them. But I've told them, hey, like, the fairy queens are taking the priority right now. But, like, I love you and I tend to you the same. So, like, every night, like, they've been teaching me, like, these forms of dolphin reiki. And so, like, you know, as I'm putting my son to bed, like, I'll practice with that a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, they, they know that they have to wait. And so... I think one of the changes that's happening in um, in channeling and oracular work is that um, it's less like um, source is telling me to do this and I just respond, um, and more like source is having a conversation with me and we're co-creating this reality. Yes. Yeah. I'm. I'm feeling that there's going to be women listening to this conversation who have the question, what do I do when I feel over-downloaded? Yeah. And I think you are a beautiful teacher and your embodiment and the structure that you've set up for yourself to know, yes, I have, I have these dolphins who, if you decided, and it is your choice, it is yeah. Lizzie's choice, if you wanted to say, you know what, which I know you wouldn't do, but I'm going to hold off on the book and I'm going to listen to what the dolphins want to create. And you could do that, right? That would be an option, but that would not be maybe the most ideal option for you. And I think that when, when we are clear channels, there can be this tendency to start something when you see it and it's like, yeah, okay, I'm going to start that. And then when we have to set aside the hours and hours and hours that it takes to sit and write that book, then we're like, you know what would be kind of fun? Maybe I'll go hang out with the, you know, and then we like bounce over to something else. And that's not, we, I, 
am speaking on more of a collective term, not at anyone specifically, and more of just from my own experience and what I've seen other women do, but I'm so proud to have you as a friend and as someone, you know, in the Diana Society where you are you are really committing to following through with the task at hand in a, in a way that's really inspiring. Oh, it's really man. inspiring. Um, so I, I guess I'm wondering if, if there's any, um, maybe any advice you could give to how to set some structure, because you have this beautiful balance with this masculine and feminine within you. Um, and that was something, I think you did a live video, maybe I'll have to find it and link it in here, where you were talking about that. I, you you were doing a lot there for a while, but there was one. Yeah, there was one where it's about it's 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 about the balance. It's about the balance of both. Um, so yes, we're in this divine feminine awakening and rising. However, there's like we need to have balance in both the masculine and feminine. Um, and I see that balance in you, um, and it's it's a really beautiful mirror to look at. So, is there um, you know the women who have these projects that are big? big projects, big visions, um, big downloads, how, how do you stick with it? So, um, this is, this is what I've been working with and this is not really what people want to hear. I know. Um, but I know you can deliver it. (laughs) I know people don't want to hear this. I know that, but it's so so important. so, So one of the things that gets really tricky for spiritual channels and oracles and like I want to be really clear that this work can come through in a lot of different ways like for a lot of women it's just the way that they write you know Mm -hmm. and they don't have to have a council that they're working with in order to be an oracle yeah Yeah. um and but I find that when women get distracted from their projects and they have difficulty like committing oftentimes they're evading their power so, like, um, or are scared of what's coming through them, are scared of the power of what's coming through them, are scared of birthing a new paradigm, like, mm-hmm. likening it to pregnancy and childbirth, like, that really uncomfortable gestational period where, like, you don't necessarily feel like you're in control, but you have to do this anyways. And so you have to work with fear a lot, like make you fear your friend. Um, you know, <clears throat> for me, it's involved a lot of like looking at the parts of myself from my past that I've ignored, the parts of myself that are really powerful, the part of myself that like got called a witch when she was 13 and just shut down her spiritual world. The part of me that had the FBI read to me my journal when I was in high school because I was a suspect in an FBI investigation. You know, like, I was totally afraid of what could come through me. But, like, I have to invite those parts of my heart that feel like they're hurt and invite their power back to the table and work with them. And then, like, through that process, it's so much easier to commit to what's coming through because... I'm more comfortable with my power. I'm more comfortable with what's coming through. So I'll actually go through, I'll have a channel that I'll, or um, a message that'll come through. It'll activate a part within myself that's like, well, holy balls, like I need to work with this. I'll work with her and then I'll actually come back to the message and I'll channel more because I can go deeper. Um, The worthiness piece is big. Um, using flower essences a lot to heal those parts in our second chakra that don't feel like we're worthy of sharing our medicine. Mm-hmm. Um, healing the throat chakra as well. Like, um, there's some really beautiful flower angels for that. Um, ritual, getting yourself out of your head. And like, I've got, even now I've got some, um, Artemisia Tridentata desert sage in my diffuser that helps me. Just stay focused. And then also, like, friends, the coven, um, you, Katie, my husband. Um, I did a commitment ceremony to myself and my work. And on the Equinox, um, I'm going to be having another commitment ceremony. I'm going to Mount Shasta. Um, One of the things that I'm going to do that a lot of women might feel resonant with is that 
You take your hands over a bowl of water, just like the Lady of Lourdes taught me, and you pray. Whatever it is that you're having trouble with, whatever parts of you you need to invite to the table to heal, you pray for those parts of you, you pray with your higher self, you pray with your counsel, you pray your heart out over that bowl of water, and then you preserve it. So you take a bottle, a tincture bottle, you fill two-thirds of it with that water, one-third of it with brandy or apple cider vinegar. And then every time you work, you just take your medicine. You take your own medicine. And um, so on Thursday, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that for myself again because I just finished the essence that the Fairy Queen of Lourdes gave me. Um, so yeah, I'm going to make it a mash essa. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the, the headwaters of the Sacramento River and harvest some water and leave some offerings to the fairy queen. Well, there's more of a triple goddess there, and um, then go up to the top of the mountain and commune with myself. Mm-hmm. And like, it's hard to um, prioritize myself sometimes with a six month old, but. Um, but it's required. I mean, like, I really treat the work that I'm doing like another pregnancy. Like, I have to nourish my body, nourish my soul, nourish my spirit. Um, I just spent a few days not writing because I needed a break. I needed to integrate. I needed to give myself time. Talk to my counsel and was like, hey, I need to, like, go play for a bit. <laughs> Um, and so that's that co-creation piece I'm talking about again. Like, if you feel like your guides are on your ass, like, tell them what's up. Be like, hey, like, I'm human. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I need to play. I need to, like, listen to some Beyonce and, like, cook some really good food. Yeah. Yeah. Drink some juice. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Like, take a nap. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Peace, and then peace, we'll revisit this. That's yeah. been, uh, for me, I kind of reached this point of surrender today where I'd been doing this really, and I posted about it, and I need to post again about what I'm about to say, is I was getting up really early, and I was doing this really disciplined morning, and it felt amazing when I was doing it, and then this week, it was just like, that is not going to work for me, and I am sleeping as long as I can. I'm not judging myself for how long I need to stay in bed. I'm just doing that, and it's just been... It's been really liberating. I know, and it, it comes to, if we all have these things where it's just like, just give that to yourself. If you need that, just give that to yourself. Um, yeah. yeah, so that's been um, that co-creation, right? Yeah. That's totally. the co-creation where it's like, you know what, guys? I need an extra three hours of sleep, so I'm going to be right here for another three hours, and I will get back to you as soon as I get up. But, like, yeah, we're human. We need mm-hmm. – um, revolutionaries need rest. <laughs> Revol- like rest is an act of revolution. Yes. <laughs> that is like that is that is that is it. Yes. And when you've committed to yourself and you've committed to your craft and you like have a certain amount of discipline, like I find that my queens are like, yes, woman, like mm-hmm. you are sovereign. We'll be here for you. And they they, they know it, you know. Yeah. I mean there's a certain amount of urgency because not a lot of people are working with them. So um so, so they're like, oh, you're listening? Like, ah! <laughs> oh, but, uh, yeah. anyway. Yeah. Well, uh, speaking of that, speaking of that, I just, right before our call, opened my Diana Society Drops <laughs> uh, Flower Angel Essence uh, that went out, the Diana Society Bottle Number 2. Um, tell us a little bit about your offerings, the work that you're doing, and um, how can women... How can we work with you? Yeah, so um, (laughs) I love the Diana Society. The Diana Society came uh, about based on the conversation that we had on the phone one day, actually. (laughs) Katie was like, I want to hear more about all this in a more structured way. Um, and I pay. <laughs> I was like, and I pay for that. You. Yeah, and I pay you just to access your process. Yeah, yeah. You said, I, I believe in that conversation. You said, just send me the invoice. Yeah, just send me the invoice. Like, <laughs> let me in to what, what are you writing about? What do the flower angels have to say? What's going on with these bottles? I want to yeah. know. Yeah. 
Yeah, because because up until then I was really just like hanging out in this office mm-hmm. <laughs> with the fairies. Um, and uh, and so masculine and feminine, right? Mm. Like action based. So I went on a walk, and um, Diana came to me and was like head of this society and gave me the name and then like within a day it was born two days it was was really fast it was so fast fast. it was like you and I got off the phone and all of the sudden I see like on Instagram the whole thing is done and I'm just like (laughs) it was amazing um and it's actually the Diana Society has come up in a few conversations in this oh really yeah um Layla um Katie uh, Marquez, who's here in St. Louis with me. So, yeah, and you're, the priest assessments has been really holding me through these conversations. Oh. So, yeah, that's been big medicine yeah. for me as I connect with other women and just step into my priestesshood and standing very much like powerful equals in these conversations. So, um, yeah. a lot of medicine. And yeah. So, the society is a group of like revolutionary light workers. Mm-hmm. Who have come together to share their journeys. Mm-hmm. Um, my journey is just a part of it. And it's really beautiful to hear like your process and the process of all the women. And um, every month we take the same flower essence combination together. So um, it's, a, it's a different process for me because I actually tune into what I need that month. Mm-hmm. And I've been sharing that with people as opposed to like listening to a conversation about another woman and Right. Um, and then custom crafting it for her. Um, so um, there's a flower essence and a, a healing circle, um, the full moon circle. Diana um, wanted us to get together on the full moon. I know there's a lot of new moon circles out there, which are beautiful. And um, there's this really, like, active energy with the full moon and Diana. And um, we've been getting together for that. And then there's this beautiful coven circle of women online who um, I feel like we're all growing together in a really, really powerful way. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm really proud of the work that each person is doing. And um, I really love just stepping into that temple space and being like, what's going on today? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I'll have um, enrollment opens every three months, every quarter. Um, enrollment will be opening again in November. And so right now you can sign up for the wait list. There's, um, it's probably going to sell out this time. Um, I, cause it's, it's, out, right? it's out. Yeah. I tapped it at 39. We have 23 right now. Mm-hmm. And I think there's 10 people on the wait list. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's September while we're recording. So, right. so we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Um, I, I actually, um, surrender to whatever Diana is the boss I listen to her and co-create with her Mm -hmm. um and so that's that's one offering um I have a mentorship program which I think I'm going to be revising but um for now it is three months together flower essence a month energy work healing calls I work primarily with three camps of women um motherhood is a big thing Career transitions is a big thing. Um, and then oracular awakening is another. Oftentimes people will come to me with one of the two and they'll end up talking about the third. Um, and uh, I work a lot with helping women identify their counsels, who's on their counsel. Um, I work with a lot of women and their future self, basically contacting that future self part of them, having that future self download information mm-hmm. and cellular upgrades in the body so that you become your future self more quickly than it would take you otherwise. Um, and like creating that relationship with your future self and your higher self because I really think that the, the process is actually becoming um, your own sovereign healer, learning from all of these other people, but, like, ultimately, like, you are the one who's doing the work. You're healing yourself. Mm -hmm. And the more tools that you have to do that, the better. Um, And then, um, and then I'm also going to be expanding my offerings for just single sessions, single channel readings. Um, Right now, I have a future self session up there um, where we just... I'll create a future self essence with you where you'll receive the medicine of your future self and then take that. 
Um, and uh, there's a few other ideas that I have out there for single sessions, but I'm waiting. Well, maybe by the time this goes out, those will we'll be able to link all of them, and and people yeah. can read in the notes what exactly yeah. those are. So totally, yeah. yeah. So that's what I have right now, and um, I'm also very much open to. Um, co-creating with people if there's something that they need that they feel like I'd be able to help with like you can just email me and I'll I'll tune in and see if it feels really good yeah <laughs> these days I'm all about like really good yeah <laughs> we talked about this I'm like I don't have time for just good <laughs> yeah it needs to be the full body resonance like yeah. I'm sitting up straighter and need to know more kind of yes yeah absolutely otherwise, otherwise I gotta focus on my book and my kid you know I hear you. I yeah. It's time. Yeah. I really don't want to waste anybody's time. Right, right. Mm. Well, thank you for your time today. Good oh, of course. You. <laughs> thank you for listening to me just blather on about the fairies. Oh, are you kidding me? No, that's, that is, uh, that is new paradigm uh, yeah. information coming through, Lizzie. So I'm honored, honored to have you and uh, share. I, I hope as many women as possible who are listening can, can, jump into the Diana Society. It's a really powerful uh, society that you're that you're building and I'm so happy to be in there. Um, Me too. Yeah, yeah. A powerful presence there and it's really I feel I feel honored. Yeah. I feel honored with all the women that are in there. I'm like, well you're in here? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you for sharing your medicine with us today. And you're medicine. welcome. Thank you. And just thank you, Katie, for all the women that are gathering for the movement that you're birthing, the magic that you're birthing for for your own fairy queen medicine yeah. and, and Aces medicine and every everything that you're doing. I just um I just love you so much. I love so you. <laughs> thank you for being here. You're so welcome. Soon. Sounds good.